Okay, in this video, we are going to divide polynomials. Um, specifically, we're going to do long division. If you search for dividing polynomials, you'll pretty much find long division and synthetic division. We're going to do long division. So let's start by recapping how to actually do long division with regular numbers, because if we can do this, it's going to kind of lend us some insight as to how to divide polynomials. So if I start, what we do first is we see how many times does this go into this. And in this case, the answer is 2, because there are two 12s in, in 27. And then I multiply back through 2 times 12 gives me 24. And then I subtract down and get a 3. And then I bring down the 7, and then we repeat the process. 12 goes into 37 now. It goes into that 3 times. 3 times 12 is... 36, and so I subtract and get a 1, and, and so 1 in this case would be our remainder, so I could write it as 23 remainder 1, if you remember doing that from back in the day, or I can just write that remainder over what I'm dividing by. So uh, that could be 23 and 1 twelfth would be another way of writing that. So this is kind of the notation that I want us to have as we go forward. Because when we divide polynomials, we might have a remainder. So um, let's move on to an example with polynomials. So I'm going to start with this. And we got 8x cubed minus 4x squared plus 32x. And I'm dividing that by 4x. And so first, I'm going to see how many times does 4x go into 8x cubed. And so in two of you might have to do some aside work. In other words, um, 4x times what gives me 8x cubed? That's really what we're doing when we divide. We're saying 4x times what would give us this value. And so I can kind of look at it in two different ways. I can kind of look at it from a coefficient standpoint. And I can kind of look at it um, with the variables. So I know that 4 times... 2 gives us 8, and I know that x to the first times x squared would give us x to the third. We got those exponent properties. Whenever I'm multiplying, I add the exponents, right? So here, what would go here would be a 2x squared. Now, just real quickly before we move on, here's a different way of looking at this. If you're wondering how I'm coming up with that 2x squared, here's a different way of looking at it. I can just say, what's 8x cubed divided by... 4x to the first. And I can just simplify this. We know that 8 divided by 4 would give me a 2. And then x cubed divided by x to the first. In this case, when dividing, we subtract exponents and get x squared. So that's two different ways that I could have gotten this. So, so if you remember what we did in the previous example, once I find this first quotient, I'm going to multiply it back through. And so in this case, we have 2x squared times 4x. So 2 times 4 would give me 8. x squared times x would give me x cubed, because remember, that's like an x to the first right there. When I subtract, it gives me 0, but then i got to bring down my negative 4x squared. But now we repeat the process. I really just have a negative 4x squared, so I'm saying how many times does 4x go into that? So we can kind of do our same process. We're saying 4x times what? gives me negative 4x squared. Well, if I look at the coefficients, 4 times negative 1 gives me negative 4, and x to the first times x would give me x squared. So that second quotient that we can find when we divide negative 4x squared by 4x would be minus 1x. Let me show you the other representation of how to do this. If I were to take negative 4x squared and divide it by 4x, once again, this is just a, if, if this representation didn't make sense to you, I'm going to calculate this negative 1x a different way. If I'm dividing, we can do negative 4 divided by 4. I can divide the coefficients, and that gives me negative 1. And then I can do x squared divided by x to the first. When dividing values with exponents, you subtract the exponents. And so that's two different ways of coming up with this negative 1x. That's kind of the hard part here. So I'm giving you two different representations for how to do that. So now we multiply back through. Negative 1x times 4x would be negative 4 
x squared because the negative 1 times the 4 is the negative 4 and x times x is x squared. Now we're subtracting. When I subtract a negative, that's like I'm adding. So I have negative 4x squared plus 4x squared. Once again, 0. And I'm going to bring down the 32x. And this will hopefully be our last step. I'm now dividing 32x by 4x. I'm seeing how many times does 4x go into 32x. And we can do this once again with our two different representations. I know that 4x times some value would give me 32x. Well, 4 times 8 gives me 32. And then really, x times 1, you could put a 1 there, would give you x, but we're, our x exponent doesn't change, so it's really just 4x times 8. That means this last thing up here would be in 8. If this representation does not make sense to you, let's do it with the dividing representation. So if I come over here and I were to do 32x divided by 4x, that's really what we're trying to figure out. x over x just kind of divides to 1, and 32 divided by 4 gives you 8. So either way, we're going to end up with this 8 right here. And so just to finish out the problem, we're going to multiply back through. 8 times 4x would give me 32x. I subtract, and that gives me 0. So there is my answer. You can always check by multiplying it back through. If I take this trinomial and multiply it by that monomial, I should get this as my answer. That same relationship between division and multiplication is still true. If this divided by 4x gives me this, then I should be able to take that same value and multiply it by 4x to check and see if I end up back where I started. Okay? That's the long division way. I'm going to show you another representation. You can get tired of all these representations. I could also show it like this because don't we sometimes show division... like so. If I were to do that, I could just take it one step at a time. 8x cubed divided by 4x. 8 divided by 4 is 2. x cubed divided by x. I would subtract exponents, and that would give me x squared. And now I do the next term. Negative 4x squared divided by 4x. Negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. x squared divided by x is x. Once again, subtracting exponents. And then lastly, 32 x divided by 4x, um, 32 divided by 4 is 8, x divided by x cancels. So there's, a, there's another way you could have gotten it. Keep in mind this strategy is only going to work when we're dividing by a monomial. In our next example, we're going to divide by a binomial, and, uh, and we won't be able to do this representation or this strategy. So let's move on. Now we are dividing a trinomial by a binomial. Notice I have two terms in this that I'm dividing by. Um, let's jump into it. When I'm dividing like this, I'm only going to look at the first terms to define to decide what goes here. So for example, I'm not going to consider the 2 yet. I'm going to do 2x squared divided by x. In other words, how many times does x go into 2x squared? Well, x times what gives me 2x squared? Well, there's like a 1 here. So you know that 1 times 2 gives me 2. And x times x gives me x squared. If you're not sure how I got that, you could always divide. 2x squared divided by 1x. 2 divided by 1 is 2. So 2 divided by 1 is 2. And x squared divided by x to the first. I subtract exponents and get x to the first. Either way, you're going to end up with that same value when you divide 2x squared by x. But when I divide that 2x squared by x, I get... 2x, and then we're going to multiply back through. Now, here's where it's different with the binomial. I'll multiply first 2x times x, and that's going to give me 2x squared. But I'm not done. I now have to do 2x times 2, which is going to give me 4x. And I can line it up under the other term with x, because now when we subtract, this is going to work really well. 2x squared minus 2x squared kind of cancels. 7x minus 4x gives me 3x, and then I can bring down the 7, and we repeat the process. How many times does x go into 3x? Well, x times what 
gives me 3x. Let's find out. Well, to look at the coefficients, it's really 1 times 3 gives you 3. And x really just times 1 would give you x. We don't really have to put anything there. It's, just, it's basically just x times 3 to give you 3x. Uh, if that representation doesn't make sense, we can always just do 3x divided by x. That would give you that same 3. Either way, when we divide 3x by x, we're going to get a 3. Oh, I'll keep my color coded going. 3 times x gives you 3x. And then don't forget, here's the different part with the binomial. Then you have to do 3 times 2 to give you a... 6. Now when we subtract, 3x minus 3x cancels, 7 minus 6 is 1. But remember, this is like our remainder, okay? So if you think back to that first example I did with the numbers, I can write this as 2x plus 3 remainder 1, but we can also write it as a fraction. I can also write it as 1 over x plus 2. So my quotient here is 2x plus 3 and then what's left over is 1 over x plus 2. There's my quotient. Whenever you got the remainder, it's a little bit hard to ch harder to check with multiplication. Like if you remember the previous example, I said you could check it by taking this and multiplying it by this to see if you end up with this. But it's a little bit harder here, so I don't know if I'd do that strategy. All right, that's a lot of me talking. I want you to try some on your own. So you try to divide this and then hit play. And then we'll see what happens. So x squared minus 12x plus 32 divided by x minus 4. Here we go. x squared divided by x should give me an x. I'm going to kind of go through this example a little bit faster. And then when I multiply back through, x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 4 gives me negative 4x, and I'm subtracting this. So here's where you got to be careful. x squared minus x squared, well, that just cancels. But here it's negative 12x minus a negative 4x. Well, when you're subtracting a negative, that's like you're adding a positive. So negative 12x plus 4x would be negative 8x, and then I'm going to bring down a 32. And now I'm repeating the process. Negative 8x divided by x, or in other words, x times what gives me negative 8x, and hopefully you're saying the answer is negative 8. When I multiply back through, negative 8 times x gives me negative 8x, and negative 8 times negative 4 gives me positive 32. But remember, I'm subtracting this, so negative 8x minus a negative 8x, well, that's just adding, is going to cancel because negative 8x plus 8x adds to 0, and then 32 minus 32 gives me 0. So there's no remainder. In other words, when you take this trinomial and divide it by x minus 4, you get x minus 8 as your answer. Since there's no remainder, this would be a great one to check by multiplying it back together. I'm not going to do it right now, but if you take your quotient times this, it should give you this value. So you could either do your distribution or your box method and multiply those, but you should end up with this as your answer, and that's always a good check. Let's try another one. Okay, here, divided by 2x minus 2. All right, here we go. 6x squared divided by 2x. Once again, take it step by step. 6 divided by 2 would give you the 3, and then x squared divided by x, which is really x to the first, would give you x. And so I can multiply back through. 3x times 2x would give me 6x squared, and then 3x times negative 2 would give me negative 6x. So we're subtracting this entire value. 6x squared minus 6x squared well, that just cancels. And then here, be careful here, 6x minus a negative 6x. When you're subtracting a negative, that means you're adding a positive. That's going to be a 12x right there before I bring down the 4. And now let's repeat the process. 12x divided by 2x. 12 divided by 2 would give me a 6. And then x divided by x is really just cancels out. So it should just be a 6 here. And then when we multiply back through, we have 6 times 2x would give me... 12x, and 6 
times negative 2 would give me a negative 12. And I'm subtracting this entire value. 12x minus 12x cancels. 4 minus a negative 12 means adding a positive 12, so that's going to become a 16. Now, that means this is our remainder. So I could write this as 3x plus 6 remainder 16, or we can write it in that fraction form. 3x plus 6 and 16 over 2x minus 2. So that could be our answer to that one. Let's do this one right here. Once uh, Here in a couple of units when you learn how to factor this problem becomes a lot easier. But for now, we can do x squared minus 4 divided by x plus 2. x squared divided by x gives me x. x times x is x squared. And then x times 2 gives me 2x. Now here's the problem with writing my 2x right here. I can't subtract those because those aren't like terms. If you notice in this thing that we're dividing, is that the divisor? I forget my, which one's divisor and which one's dividend. I'm bad with my math vocab. But here you notice there's not a term with x. You go straight from x squared to a constant. So what I suggest doing here is this, x squared plus 0x minus 4. I basically just rewrote this with a term with x in there, and that's going to make it easier to line everything up. So if we back up a little bit, now we can see that x times x would give me x squared, but then x times 2 would give me 2x. But now I have it lined up here because I put the 0x here term. I have it lined up so that we can subtract. x squared minus x squared cancels. And 0 minus 2x is negative 2x. I'm going to bring down my negative 4 and repeat the process. Negative 2x divided by x should be negative 2. Or in other words, x times what gives me negative 2x. And the answer is still negative 2. But negative 2 times x, when I'm multiplying back through, negative 2 times x gives me negative 2x. Negative 2 times 2 would give me a negative 4. We're subtracting 2x, negative 2x minus a negative 2x. Well, that's just adding, and that cancels. And negative 4 minus a negative 4 is just adding, so it's negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. So there's no remainder. I mean, that is our quotient. Once again, you could always check. If I do x minus 2 times that x plus 2 that we divided by, my answer should be what we started with. Not going to walk through that right now, but just know that that's a good check. All right, this video is getting long, and we've worked lots of examples. Um, lots of other resources out there, so make sure you can go to other videos on YouTube about long division to get more examples. But this is just something that takes lots of practice. This is really a new idea, so don't freak out or stress out. Just uh, come see me at Tutorials or watch more videos and we'll get it taken care of.